When did your parents telling you to be more like your sibling end up stabbing them in the back? When my mom passed away, I fully expected to get nothing from her will. That was our dynamic. She had two daughters, my older sister Savannah, who was the golden child, and me. Savannah lived the picture-perfect life with her real estate husband in the four-bedroom house. I, on the other hand, was the sensitive and unsuccessful one, since I was an art major and never lived up to my mother's potential. For Savannah's 18th birthday, she got a car, and all I got was a planner so that I could figure things out. But when my mom got sick a year ago, I put our differences aside and drove across town every single week to spend nights with her and listen to her talk. Savannah, on the other hand, would just send mom a DoorDash meal with stupid little notes that read, feel better, while she was on vacation somewhere in Europe. Whenever the DoorDash meals got delivered, I could see the look on my mother's face drop, and it got to the point where she wouldn't even let the food get delivered. She would just turn to me and say, honey, I don't want whatever nastiness Savannah ordered for me today. Can I just have the home-cooked food you brought me? That was the first time I'd ever had my mother ask for something I made rather than what Savannah had to offer. As time went on and my mom started getting worse, I noticed she would stare at me when I would be sitting and reading in the chair next to her. The expression on her face looked like she was in awe, but I knew that would be too good to be true. I asked her once why she was looking at me in that way, and she just shook her head and waved her hand, but I could swear that I saw a few tears in her eyes, and I knew there was something she was not telling me. Sadly, I didn't get a direct answer from her because just a few days later she passed away, and of course I was the only one there to hold her hand through it, while Savannah was at home making excuses and saying this was just too much for her to handle and she needed to be alone. A couple of weeks later, Savannah and I finally went to see the lawyer to have the will read, and that's when everything changed. As the lawyer explained who got what, my heart dropped in shock because my mom had left everything to me, the house, her savings, even the family heirloom pearl necklace she had promised to give to Savannah ever since she was 12, and Savannah was only left with a single handwritten letter which read, I loved you for all the wrong reasons. When Savannah read that, she practically had steam coming out of her ears as she stormed out of the lawyer's office in a rage and hasn't spoken to me since. I was also given a letter, but I've kept it a secret until now. In it, my mom had written admitting that she was a terrible mother to me, and she couldn't feel worse about it. Savannah was smart but had no heart, and I was the opposite. As I read it, I wept with joy since I finally felt the approval I had longed for. She continued on to apologize for always comparing me to Savannah. She should never have treated me so awfully growing up, and she was so proud of the person I turned out to be, regardless of all the hardships she had put me through. It was such a powerful letter that even the lawyer shed a tear as we read it together in his office. Since then, I've kept that letter in a frame tucked in my art studio, because for the first time in my life, I knew that my mom finally saw me, and all it took for that to happen was her dying. And maybe that's the saddest part.